Their offspring. A recent study suggests that bacteria can keep a record of the environment that surrounds and affects them. These memories can be passed on to subsequent generations. The discovery shows that inheritance is more complex than previously thought, even for the simplest organisms. It could also have important medical applications, such as in combating antibiotic resistance. Bacterial cells can remember brief, temporary changes in their bodies and immediate surroundings. And although these changes are not encoded in the cell's genetics, the cell can still pass on the memories of them to its offspring, even across generations. The description and results of the work by scientists from Northwestern University and the University of Texas Southwestern were published in the journal Science Advances. Bacteria keep a record of how their environment affects them. This can be passed on to subsequent generations. The discovery is one of many in recent years that have greatly complicated the way we think about evolution. It challenges long-held assumptions about how the simplest organisms pass on and inherit physical traits. It could also be used for new medical applications such as subtly modifying disease-resistant bacteria to make their offspring more susceptible to antibiotics. The central assumption in bacterial biology is that heritable physical traits are primarily determined by DNA. But from a complex systems perspective, we know that information can also be stored at the level of the regulatory network between genes. We wanted to investigate whether there are traits that are passed from parent to offspring that are not encoded in DNA, but rather in the regulatory network itself, said Adilson Motter of Northwestern University, one of the study's authors. We found that temporary changes in gene regulation trigger permanent changes in the network that are passed on to offspring. In other words, Echoes of changes that affect their parents persist in the regulatory network, while the DNA remains unchanged, he added. Since scientists first identified the molecular basis of the genetic code in the 1950s, they have assumed that traits are passed on primarily, if not exclusively, via DNA. But that assumption has not been entirely accurate. Thomas Whitehawk of Northwestern University, a CO author on the paper, cited the Dutch famine during World War II as an example of trait inheritance without DNA. Studies have shown that the children of men who were exposed to famine in the womb tended to be overweight as adults. Such memories can last for generations, in this case warning that food shortages are coming so that the body should store as many calories as possible. But determining the causes of such non-genetic inheritance in humans has proven difficult. In complex organisms, the challenge is to disentangle the confounding factors, Motter said. We might be able to isolate such causes in the simplest single-cell organisms because we can control their environment and interfere with their genetics. If we observe something, we can attribute the origin of non-genetic inheritance to a limited number of possibilities, in particular changes in gene regulation, he added. The regulatory network is analogous to the communication network that genes use to influence each other. The research team hypothesized that this network itself could be the key to passing on traits to offspring. The researchers used the well-studied bacterium Escherichia coli to investigate this question. In the case of E. coli, the entire organism is a single cell, Whitehawk said. It has far fewer genes than a human cell, a little over 4,000 compared to 20,000. Because E. coli is a well-studied model organism, we know the organization of the gene regulatory network, he said. The advantage of working with bacteria is that they replicate very quickly, and you can observe many generations in a relatively short time. 
the research team used a mathematical model of the regulatory network to simulate the temporary inactivation and subsequent reactivation of individual genes in E. coli. The researchers found that these transient perturbations can generate permanent changes that can be inherited for many generations. If the changes are encoded in the regulatory network, not in the DNA, how can the bacteria pass them on through generations? Their idea is that a temporary, reversible disruption triggers an irreversible chain reaction in the regulatory network. Deactivating one gene affects the gene next to it in the network. By the time the first gene is reactivated, the cascade is in full swing. Genes interact with each other. If you disrupt one gene, it affects the others, Motter said, adding that different types of disruption can cause similar effects. These could be changes in the bacteria's environment, such as temperature, nutrient availability, or pH. Disruption doesn't always cause long-term effects, but the team was able to identify factors that increased the chances of this happening. For example, when a disrupted gene is located near a highly connected component of the regulatory network, the effects are more likely to persist, even after the gene's status is restored to normal. The researchers achieved such disruptions in the lab, but they believe that natural changes in the environments where E. coli lived could cause similar disruptions, although probably much less efficiently. <laughs>